Hi, I'd like to welcome you to the evening services of the Northfield Church of Christ for Sunday, October the 16th. Uh, we will sing several songs. Uh, we will observe the Lord's Supper. And I have a message for you that I hope will help us uh, along our evening and give us something to think about. We are singing from our songbooks that we use at the Northfield Church of Christ, Songs of Faith and Praise. If you do not have one of these books, I will give you the uh, name uh, of the, the title of the hymn along with the number so that you can Google it or if you have another book, you can reference that book. Our first song is number 213 in our books. The title is He is Able. 213, He is Able. He is able, more than able, to accomplish what concerns me the day. He is able, more than able, to handle anything that comes my way. He is able, more than able, to do much more than I could ever dream. He is able, more than able, to make me what he wants me to be. Wonderful. If you will turn to number 539, an old time song. 539. <clears throat> Let's sing verses 1, 3, and 4. 1, 3, and 4. 539, higher ground. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day, still praying as I onward bound, Lord plant my feet on higher ground, Lord lift me up and let me stand, by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to live above the world where Satan's darts at me are hurled. For faith has the joyful sound, the song of saints on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost high and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I'll pray till heaven I found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. And to pre prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper, number 366, by Christ redeemed. 360. Six by Christ redeemed. <clears throat> by Christ redeemed and Christ restored, 
we keep the supper of the word and show the death of our dear Lord until he come his body given in our stand is seen in this memorial bread and as we drink we see the blood until he and thus that dark betrayal night With the last advent we unite By one bright chain of loving right Until he comes We've reached the part of our service where we observe the Lord's Supper which the Lord has instructed us to do on the first day of the week. He did this on the night that he was betrayed. And uh, on that night, uh, he uh, supped at the Passover with his disciples, uh, sat around the table and explained everything to them uh, that was going to happen. And with that, uh, we understand that um, he's going to die for our sins. And in the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul uh, goes further and almost word for word uh, institutes the Lord's Supper for the churches uh, and uh, lets us know exactly what we are supposed to do. We are supposed to take up the bread, which is the symbol of Jesus's body. We are to take of the fruit of the vine, which is a symbol of the blood that he shed for us. Let's never, ever, ever uh, minimize the importance of gathering about the Lord's table. Let's never minimize uh, how uh, Jesus gave up his life that you and I might live. So as we uh, uh, think of these things, let's make them very, very personal unto ourselves. Let's pray for the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful that Jesus was willing to sacrifice himself as part of your plan, that he did so for the, our redemption, that he suffered the pain in his body of being hung on that cruel cross. Bless us as we partake of this bread and think of that body that died in agony upon the cross. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. As the last of the last plagues that God sent upon Egypt, uh, uh, before the Israelites were able to leave and head across the wilderness to the promised land, uh, they were instructed to put blood upon the lampposts and the angel of death would pass over uh, their homes. And it is indeed very much like uh, Jesus' blood, which um, keeps us from dying eternally that blood that washes away our sins. So as we partake of the fruit of the vine, uh, let's remember that and let's take it very personally to heart. Let's uh, remember that Jesus' blood, the life-giving fluid in his body, just like is in your, your body and my body, was shed for the remission of our sins. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. Our God and Heavenly Father, we can't even fathom what Jesus went through as he died on the cross. But we do understand through your word that the blood that he shed led to the redemption of our sins and that his blood washes away our sins. 
as our great mediator and as our great high priest. We're so grateful for what Jesus did for us on that cross. And we commemorate that at this time by partaking of the fruit of the vine. Help us to do so the way, the way you would have us to. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. For the sake of convenience at this time, we do as churches have been doing since the first century, giving as we have prospered, giving <coughs> with a grateful heart, giving with the <coughs> understanding that you, you love us and that you care for us, and we give back to you that which is yours. We just pray that those that are stewards in our church will utilize this money for uh, the good of the church and bringing more souls to Jesus and uh, in helping those that are in need. Uh, let's pray for the giving. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that we have the opportunity to give. We know that uh, giving back to you is almost superfluous because you have it all and we really have nothing in this life. But we do this so that uh, we, can, uh, we can follow New Testament scripture and we do this in knowing that you through Jesus Christ founded the church your kingdom here on earth and that we will use uh, these funds to keep this church uh, grounded in the Lord to hopefully bring more souls to Jesus and to help those that are in need bless us as we give we ask this prayer in Jesus most holy name amen And the last song that we'll sing is uh, number 586. 586. My faith looks up to thee. <laughs> My faith looks up to thee, the Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray, take all my guilt away. Oh, let me from this day be holy thine. May thy rich grace impart strength to my fainting heart. My zeal inspire. As thou hast died for me, oh, may my love to thee pure, warm, and changeless be, all living fire. When life's dark maze I tread, and griefs around me spread. Be thou my guide. Bid darkness turn to day. Wipe sorrow's tears away. Lord, let me ever stray from me aside. When winds lie trance your dream, when death calls all and stream, shall hold me wrong. 
blessed Savior, then in love, fear and distrust remove. Oh, bear me safe above a ransom soul. I'm glad that uh, we were all able to sing together. I hope you were able to sing with us. Uh, you may have noticed the, the theme uh, of the songs was about faith. And uh, if you were... Uh, at services this morning, you know that the title of my lesson this evening is Salvation by Faith, but not Faith Alone. And so uh, with that, uh, I'd like us to get a little background on this lesson. Uh, you know, uh, faith is such an important part of our makeup. And you know, uh, there are churches uh, that say that we're saved uh, only by faith. There are those that believe that uh, we are saved by the things that we do as Christians. But the Bible teaches that one is saved by faith, but not by faith alone. So I guess this begs the question, what does it mean to be saved by faith, but not faith alone. You know, when Martin Luther broke away from the Roman Catholic Church, um, his thought was that salvation was by faith alone. Now, the best, the basic meaning of faith is trust. Therefore, what any church that says we're saved by faith alone says that we're saved if we just trust in Jesus. Thus, they teach just to accept or receive Jesus into your heart as your Savior. Thus, the conclusion is we are saved by faith alone. Uh, I, I'm not sorry to tell you this, but it's not that easy. There is more to um, salvation than just faith. Now, Luther rejected the premise that we are saved by the works that we do. And they used Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 as the premise and the passage save, says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, not that of yourselves, but it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that one may not boast. Now, if you pull that scripture out and make it a microcosm of our belief, it might lead us to believe that it's just faith. That's all there is. Paul did say, we're not saved by works, but by grace through faith. But see, we have to read the rest of this. We have to understand that action is necessary to prove the faith that we have. Um, <laughs> that would almost make faith a work when we think about it. Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 29, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. Faith is a work that God the Father wants us to do. But, if we're not saved by works, then we're not saved by faith because it's a work. <laughs> you, you see the kind of dichotomy of thought here. With that in mind, 
let's look at what the different types of works might just be. The Bible speaks about many kinds of works or deeds that we do. Going back to Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9, uh, that folks that believe that we're saved by faith, not by works, quote, we see an example of different kinds of works. And what happens is those folks stop reading at verse 9. We need to read verse 10. All right. After it says, for by grace you have been saved through faith and not that of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not as a result of works, so that one might be boast. Let's read verse 10. It says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them whoa that we would walk in good works that's indisputable all right obviously faith is important if we are to achieve salvation however we are the workmanship of God created by Jesus Christ for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we would walk in them, that we would walk in our good works. If there were not different kinds of good works, there's a contradiction between verses 8 and 9 we're not saved by work. And verse 10, that says we must do works. And the Bible is not a book of contradiction. In Ephesians 2, 8 to 9, the works by which we are not saved are our own works about which we could boast. We're not saved by any works whereby we earn salvation. But God commands us to work. When we do those works, we're not earning salvation. What we're doing is what the Lord has instructed us to do. He has instructed us to put our faith on the line. He has instructed us to not just say what we are, but to do what we are. And so, with that in mind, what is the biblical meaning of salvation by faith? Well, I think that the Bible teaches that we are saved by a system of faith rather than by a system of works. Now, one of the works that we do is obedience. Brethren, that's a work. It is a work to obey what the Lord tells us to do. In other words, what we do is we prove that we have faith by the works that we do. But with that in mind, when we do those works, we do not earn salvation. Salvation is not an earned thing. It is by grace that we are saved. Our works or our actions prove that we really believe and we really trust in God. See, the works, the deeds are the proof. If we were saved by faith alone, we could become hermits. We could go about and live isolated lives. We wouldn't have to tell anybody about Jesus. We wouldn't have to show how uh, Jesus saved us. We wouldn't uh, have to be obedient anymore. We're just saved by faith. And the Bible just doesn't say that. Now, does the Bible command us to repent? Of course. That's what Peter said in that great sermon on the day of Pentecost. He said, repent and be baptized. Repent means to change. And so when 
we have faith that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, then it's time to change our lives. All right? When God commands us to repent or change, we're working, but we're not working about earning our salvation, but only proving that we have faith. You see, what we do, our deeds and our works, are proof of what we believe and what we have faith in. And that's so very, very important in our lives. When we're baptized, we're not earning our salvation, but we're proving that we really have faith because the Lord's word tells us to repent and to be baptized. In the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews, we have the hero's role of honor. We have Abel, we have Noah, and we have Abraham. Great men of faith. I've preached a couple of sermons on this. Faith's honor roll. And every time it mentions those, when Abel offered the sacrifice that was acceptable to God in Genesis uh, 1, 4, 2, 4, it says, by faith, Abel offered. All right. This is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. I'm sorry. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7, it says, by faith, Noah prepared the ark. And in chapter 8, it says, by faith, Abraham obeyed by going out from where he was to where God told him to go. And throughout the whole chapter, these men of faith proved that they had faith by what they did. Abel offered a sacrifice to God. Noah did something that people around him thought was ridiculous. He built the ark. People probably looked at Abraham and said, what's the matter? You've got rocks in your head. You have everything you need here. You have land, you have cattle, you have a family. Why are you leaving? By faith. All three of these men did what God instructed them to do. None of them were honored by their faith alone. They were honored by their faith and what they did to prove their faith. Now, James puts it very succinctly in James chapter 2, verse 24, where he says, you see that a man is justified by works and not faith alone. And he goes on to say, for just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. And so what the Bible teaches is that we're saved by faith, a system of faith, but not faith alone. When God requires something, we do it. We don't work or earn our salvation. We're simply manifesting our faith in what we do. Nowhere in the Bible is there a sinner's prayer that one is to pray to be saved. Nowhere in the Bible does it teach that one is saved by faith alone. However, Romans 10, 17 says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. And so as we hear what God expects, we believe, we come to trust. And then he says, we prove our trust by the works of obedience that we extend. And so with that, we come to this part of the service that asks and begs the question, have we been obedient to God? See, on the day of Pentecost, the people's hearts were touched when they see what had transpired. And they said, what should we do? And Peter said, repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. What they did was they put their faith in what they knew was right. 
but they put it into practice. They put it into obedience. They repented. They said, I'm going to change my life. They were baptized, an act of obedience. And so that's what we are called to do. We're called to obey God through obedience that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and repent of our ways and be baptized. That's our obedience. That's the proof of our faith. If you need to come to the Lord this evening uh, to uh, be baptized through the purifying waters as an act of obedience to his will, we invite you to come. If you need one of us, we would be at your beck and call and help you to make that decision in your life. As we conclude the lesson, let's all pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that you love us and that you care for us. We're just so grateful that you comfort us. We're so grateful that you show us the truth of your word in your, in your Bible. And through that proof that we know that what, that what we have to do, what is required of us to live eternally with you, it is not just to hear and believe. It is not enough to just have faith, but it is to take that faith into obedience to your will. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, as we do that in our lives. Help us to obey your will each day. Help us to make our life a work in progress that each day we'll wake up thinking, how, how can I serve the Lord how can I serve my fellow man better and better? Continue to be with us because we're just empty without you. Help us and comfort us. Continue to bless us as you have, that we might be your servants and we might always do your will. We're so grateful for all you've done for us. And with that, we pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe. And may God bless you all.